Hello again guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video we are taking a look at the soon to be released Simworks Studios Quest Kodiak. It's been a little bit of a Simworks Studios bonanza on the channel recently. I wasn't initially planning on showcasing their products back to back but I was very keen to take a look at the Kodiak so I reached out to Simworks Studios and they were kind enough to send a copy of the product our way. So today's video will be a typical preview flight, that is to say we'll be showcasing the product not really breaking it down into any specific detail, we'll save that for the review later on. The version of the aircraft you'll see here in the video is the most current and up to date build of the product. That being said as always you can expect to see changes and improvements between now and the final release. So the aim of today's video really just to show off the Simworks Studios Quest Kodiak on what I think will be a pretty fun trip. I've actually got a multi-sector trip lined up for us today, we're currently on the ground at Grand Chase Airport on the island of Saint Martin. I'm sure that many of you are already familiar with the island of Saint Martin. It's located in the Caribbean Sea and of course famous amongst aviation enthusiasts as being the home of Princess Juliana Airport. As I say though we're not going to be departing out of Princess Juliana Airport, we're currently on the ground at Grand Chase which is just out to the east and we're going to be making a multi-sector cargo run over towards the islands of Saba and St Bartholomew. Both airports en route obviously quite famous for their interesting approaches, Saba with its incredibly short runway and St Bart's with the drop in over the hills onto runway 10. As I say it should be a good fun flight and hopefully a good test as well of the Quest Kodiak's abilities. Just a couple of things to note before we get started, unfortunately I did forget to turn off FS Realistic before we began the flight, so some of the noises that you'll hear throughout the video are not native to the Quest Kodiak. You'll also probably hear a lot of clicking noises throughout the flight, that's nothing to be concerned about, that's just the sound of the electrical trim within the aircraft. Anyway guys, as always I do hope you enjoy the video. If you do please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. I have to say I've really been enjoying the Simworks Studios Quest Kodiak so far, pretty keen to show it to all of you, so let's head for the cockpit and get the aircraft started up. So good morning and welcome to the cockpit of the Simworks Studios Quest Kodiak. We've just got all of our cargo on board, we are now ready for the departure, so we'll start running through our before start checks. The pre-flight inspection has been completed, the passenger briefing not required. Cabin doors are closed and latched, we'll close up the cockpit door as well. You can hear there really excellent sounds on the aircraft, you'll notice that throughout the flight. Anyway the master switch can come on, as can the avionics masters. Parking brake is set and the brakes are checked. Engine inlet is set to normal. Fuel selector valves can come on. And the firewall fuel shut off is pushed in. Emergency power lever is set to normal. Power lever is set to idle. Feather control lever is set to feather. And the fuel condition lever is set to cut off. Wing flaps are selected up and verified up. Circuit breakers are checked in. Worth noting I have tried a few of the circuit breakers and they do actually function. I haven't tried them all but that's really nice to see. And the cabin heat is off. We'll just initialize the secondary screen here on the G1000. We're looking for a bus voltage of 24 volts. Showing 25 there on what I assume is the voltmeter. Nav lights and the beacon can come on. The emergency power lever is set to normal, propeller area is clear, we'll just give them a shout. Clear pump! And we'll close up the DV window once again. Auxiliary fuel pump can come on. Fuel flow is checked, we're showing zero, we should be seeing zero. And we'll go into low motor for the start. Ignition can come on. And we're just waiting till we're through 14% on the NG. Already up through 19% so the fuel lever can go to low idle. We should see between 12 and 16 gallons per hour on the fuel flow. I'm expecting to see a maximum of 1090 degrees Celsius on the ITT. Looks like we're well below that. I think the fuel flow reading in a uh, different unit there from what I got on the checklist. So just waiting for the engine to stabilise. 
KLM 736 start. It looks like we have a good start. So the start switch can go off, as can the ignition. Propeller leave and go to max RPM. And just checking the engine instruments. Looks already fuel pump can go to standby. Generator and alternator can come on. Exterior lights are set. We'll take the taxi lights in just a moment's time. And we'll set up the avionics now for our departure. So on the altimeter we're looking for a QNH of 3001. Sorry sir, go ahead, KLM 736. KLM 736 clearance is available. Looks like that's showing a little bit low, we'll just hit the B key there, set the SIMS QNH. So it looks like 3003 as you can see, we're pretty much down at sea level. Departure track initially will be a heading of 214. We'll set the CDI to GPS and we'll set the heading bug to 214. KLM 736, go ahead. KLM 76, clear from Curacao to Amsterdam via the Scapa 1 kilo departure. Climb flight level 310, squawk 3155. So that's 214 set. Lastly we'll set our cruising altitude. Probably stay down fairly low for the flight today. We'll just go with 1500 feet for now. We'll see how we go in terms of the uh, cloud base. There is a little bit of cloud around. We don't really want to be dodging in and out of that any more than we have to. Anyway, the avionics are set up for the departure. We are now ready for the taxi. So we'll make our way out towards the runway. Ok so we're now down at the holding point for runway 1-2, we'll run through our before takeoff checks. Once again the part brake is set, seats and seat belts are locked and secure, inertial wheel levers are locked and once again a really nice level of attention to detail there from Simworks Studios. Flight controls. Clear to answer down flight to Scapa 1 Kilo, flight level 310, squawk 3155, KLM 736. KLM 76, ready back connect. Thank you. Our full free and in the correct sense. Flight instruments. So our altimeters are set, showing 211 there on the G1000, same on the compass. And the flight instruments are checked, we'll just come out slightly on the range there on the nav display. Auxiliary fuel pump can come on. Fuel selectors are both selected on. Firewall fuel shutoff valve is in. Fuel quantities are checked. Wing flaps, we'll go with flaps 10 for the takeoff just for the sake of interest. Though we've still got quite a bit of runway here available. Elevator and rudder trims are set. Power lever is set to idle. Quadrant friction lock has been adjusted. Engine inlet is set to normal. Pitot static heat not required. Avionics equipment is checked. Transponder go to out. CDI is set to GPS. Annunciators are checked and we just have the auxiliary fuel pump message there. Strobe lights can go on, get the taxi light off, landing light can go on. Parking brake can come off, we'll just hold the aircraft on the brakes momentarily. Propeller lever is set to max RPM and the fuel condition lever can go to high idle. So we'll just monitor the engine parameters there as the engine runs up. And everything looking good. Just checking it's all clear on final. The aircraft does actually roll under idle power with the condition lever set to high idle which is quite nice to see. I don't Shadow Pilot 2, good evening, sorry.
Okay, so we're all set and ready for the takeoff. Just running through the last of our takeoff checks. Wing flaps are set. Elevator trim is set. Annunciators are checked. And we'll start coming up on the power. We're looking for a max torque during the takeoff of 1790. You can see, looking at the windsock there, we do have a slight crosswind out from the left. And looking to rotate around 65 knots. So just coming back on the yoke. As you can see we can get the Kodiak up off the ground in pretty short order. Really nice performance from the aircraft. Information Z monitor, the Kubernetes 1010 equivalent to 9884. Anyway, flaps can come up. And we'll climb away around 110 knots. Just stay on runway heading for the time being till we're up through 500 feet. And for the climb we're looking for a max torque of 1670, we're well below that at the moment. Start our turn out towards the southwest, just making sure of course that we keep clear of the high terrain. And the RPM we're looking for 2200, 2200 is what we have. Again looking at that cloud I think we'll uh, actually climb a little bit higher, we'll probably get above it, so we'll go up to uh, 3000 feet, we'll set that on the autopilot and looking for our heading of 210 we'll come on to heading of 240 initially just to get back onto flight plan course so there's 240 set on the heading bug overall the aircraft is very pleasant to fly incredibly smooth so it's coming through a heading of 210 Outside air temperature is still 21 degrees at the moment, so icing not really a concern outside. We'll leave the pitot heat off an hour as per the checklist. And it looks like we're probably going to still be roughly in this cloud layer at 3,000 feet. On mean Dave level 50, you've been on the two in the sequence, following a Fokker 70 inbound from the north, descending to 2,500 feet, out of flight level uh, 87 about one minute ago. In terms of our engine temperatures and pressures, everything looking good there, all within limits. Always nice to see when a developer actually models the aircraft so that it behaves broadly as you would expect. I think actually we'll just continue the climb up to 5,000. Getting a really nice climb performance out of the Kodiak, so we might as well make the most of it. Just getting a little bit bumped around here as we come through the clouds. Beautiful scenery down off the left wing. We should have uh, Princess Juliana Airport just off on our right. Just bank the aircraft slightly so we can't spot it. And we've got the airport just down below us at our one o'clock. Just make out the uh, the beach there off towards the southwest, which is obviously a pretty famous spot for uh, tourists and aviation enthusiasts. Anyway, built up a little bit of speed there as we were admiring the scenery, so we'll just come back, pitch the nose up, lose some of that speed turn it into climb performance. It's 1,000 feet to go, we're nicely above the cloud layer now, so 5,000 feet looking pretty good for us. And just coming back onto our flight plan track as well, so we'll come back onto our heading of 214. 
There's 5,000. We'll level the aircraft off. And we're looking for a cruise speed of 160 knots, so again, max torque setting there will be 1670, which we're well below. RPM looking good there at 2200. So we'll set our heading bug once again. Anyway, nicely established now here in the cruise, so as usual, we'll make our way over towards Saba. We'll head outside the aircraft and take a bit of a closer look at the Quest Kodiak's external modelling. And I'll come back to you again once we're ready to make our approach in towards destination. Okay, so welcome back to the cockpit. As you can see, we're just approaching the island of Saba, still in the cruise here at the moment. Currently, we've got uh, around 1,300 foot-pounds of torque there for the power setting. We're doing about 170 knots, or just below on the TAS, 150 knots indicated, as you can see. Burning our way through about 320 pounds per hour there on the fuel. Anyway, we'll just start a descent, so we'll come back on the power. Overall, I have to say, the Kodiak is a really nice aircraft to fly, as I mentioned on the uh, departure. It's very smooth. Once you've got it trimmed out, it's very stable as well. It's really easy to hand fly in the cruise, as we've done all the way over to Saba. The wind's out from 070, so we're looking for runway 12. You can just about make out the location of the airfield just off tower 11 o'clock. We'll leave the CDI and GPS. Coincidentally, it's already set to a heading of uh, 120, so it's a nice little visual indication there as to the runway heading. And as I say, we'll just commence the descent down to 1,000 feet to enter into the pattern. As you can see, we're on a bit of a left-hand uh, base leg here at the moment for runway 12. We'll carry out the descent checks. So the engine inlet is set to normal. Pitot-static heat, again, not required. Altimeter is set. CDI is set, power is set as required, seats and seat belts are adjusted and secure, and the inertial reel levers are set to lock. We'll carry out some of our before landing items as well now, just to save ourselves a little bit of work later on. So the fuel selector valves are both selected on, auxiliary fuel pump can go on. Firewall fuel shutoff is in. Fuel condition lever is set to high idle, prop lever is set to max RPM, and that's down to the line. We'll take the uh, flaps later on as we make our approach. Uh, level 02, uh, level 040, 23 miles, and information So we'll just weave our way around the cloud here, and then we'll bring ourselves onto a final for runway 12. Zero zero, get out of 
getting a pretty decent descent rate out of the uh, Kodiak here. We've still got some power on. We're doing about uh, 15, 1600 feet per minute, albeit we do obviously still have quite a high speed at the moment. We'll keep coming back on the power. We'll let that speed bleed off. We'll start taking some flap. Report zero four zero. Zero four zero this time, we'll just keep the nose up momentarily. We're a little bit high and fast here at the moment, so we'll get the speed back. Go full flaps, that will help us with a little bit of drag. And actually we can take 10 degrees below 138 knots, so we'll take that now. Below 120 we can go to 20 degrees. And below 108 we can take full flap. So there's 108, there's flaps full. Landing light is on and that's the before landing checks complete So just coming around on to final for runway 12. As I said the wind should be out from around 070 so it's coming in off the sea. Hopefully we won't get too many bumps off the hills as a result. Speed's looking good at the moment. And as I said not looking for anything flash with the landing we just want to get the aircraft down onto the runway. Start braking and slowing down as soon as possible. Leave here to one descend level 040 and uh, report the island of the field inside. A few little bumps here on short final. But again the aircraft handling very nicely, very easy to control. So we'll get the aircraft onto the runway, we'll start braking, go full on the uh, beta range on the prop. And you can see even in something like the uh, Kodiak, the runway here at Saba is Pretty short to negotiate. Anyway, getting ourselves stopped. We'll get ourselves turned around here in the turning node. So again, overall the Kodiak, really good fun to fly, very easy to fly as well. It responds really nicely on the controls. Get ourselves vacated and then we'll carry out the after landing checks. Looks like we're pretty limited for space here on the uh, tarmac. We'll pull up on the right here outside of the uh, terminal building. Just keeping a good eye on our wingtip clearance. I think 030, just that 53. And I'll do this for now. So the part brake can go on. Offline checks, wing flaps are up. Fuel condition lever can go to low idle. And uh, Jet F-53, would you prefer the RMP approach or the uh, low class DMA approach? Now we have low idle set. Auxiliary fuel pump can come off. Strobe lights are off. Landing light can come off as well. And the pitot heats are off. For the shutdown the part brake is set. Auxiliary bus switch is off. Power lever is set to idle. Prop control lever can go to feather. We like the localizer approach 
Roger, Jetta 53, clear for the localizer. DME approach, report establish a final for on wave 1 month. Current winds are calm at 3 knots. And it's now in the feather position. Generator and alternator can come off. And of course we have the appropriate caution there. ITT is stabilised and the fuel condition lever can go to cut off. Okay, so leg one of our trip complete, we've just landed safely in Saba. As you'll have seen for yourselves, Saba is pretty limited in terms of landing distance available. Of course it's famous for having the shortest commercial runway in the world. I have to say I really enjoyed the flight over. Microsoft Flight Simulator of course does still have its issues, but if you do play to the sim strengths I think it's coming along very nicely now, and the Kodiak a really nice option within the sim. Anyway, we'll just continue to unload our cargo. Once we're done we'll get the aircraft started up, and I'll meet you at the holding point for runway 12 as we're ready to depart onwards towards St. Bart's. Okay, so we've offloaded our cargo here in Saba. We're all set for our departure out towards St. Bart's. Once again, we'll be taking runway 12. It's all clear on final. The part brake can come off. And for sure, this time we're going to have to backtrack the runway here just to give us a decent amount of takeoff run available. Roger, DV is 0 to 5, confirm you have the island or the field inside. We didn't really get to cover it out of Grand Case Airport, but the aircraft also taxis very nicely, it's very easy to control on the ground. DV 0 to 5, added over, Roger. Clear for the visual approach, descend the circuit altitude, and uh So lined up on runway 1-2, we'll come up on the power holding the brakes this time. And again, pretty short runway here, so we'll come more or less up to max torque. We'll go for around 1,700 foot-pounds on the uh, torque gauge. Report joining right on wind for runway 1-1. You'll be number 2 in sequence, following a Fokker 70, about to turn final for runway 1-1. Expect to extend right on wind. So power is set, the aircraft just wanted to move on the brakes now, so we'll come off the brakes. Feel that crosswind trying to push us out to the left. And again looking to rotate around 65 knots. So coming back on the stick. And we're up. So as you can see, Saba a real challenge for anyone that hasn't already visited it in the sim. Even in something like the uh, Kodiak, pretty difficult to get in and out of, but really good fun as a result. Anyway, the flaps can come up. 5,000 feet seemed to work pretty well for us last time, so planning on cruising at 5,000 feet over towards St. Bart's as well. And we'll start a gentle left turn now out towards the northeast. Heading out to St. Bart's is 069. Now max climb torque we're looking for 1670, we're doing about 1500 foot-pounds of torque at the moment so that looks good. Flaps are up, we've got 2200 there on the RPM so that's checked. We'll just hand fly the aircraft once again up to cruise out and then we'll get the autopilot in give that a bit of a test as I mentioned. In terms of our climb checks the auxiliary fuel pump can go to standby. PTO static heat again not required. The Engine inlet is set to normal. Again, we'll just weave our way around the clouds here as we climb. Airspeed, we're looking for between 110 and 120 knots, currently doing just below 120. Torque is set, prop RPM is set, and the ITT and NG there within limits. We do have quite a uh, high power setting here at the moment for the climb, but you can see that the uh, Kodiak, you can get a pretty good rate of climb out of the aircraft. We're doing almost 2,000 feet per minute here at the moment. Once 
Once again, fairly short leg over towards St. Bart's. We're looking at about uh, just shy of 30 nautical miles. So currently that'll take us around 15 minutes, but we'll pick up some speed once we're in the cruise. Roger, you should be uh, 677 uh, after departure, we'll left or no. And just leaving Saba behind us. You can just about see it through the rear cabin window there. It is your 090 to outbound, Papa Juba, over your work. Anyway, really enjoying the flight out in the uh, Kodiak so far. I think you can probably tell, but really good fun to fly. Really immersive aircraft. Very well modelled in terms of really system, sound, flight model. So far, struggling to find too much to fault with it. I think just about the only minor criticism I can level at it at the moment. Some of the click spots in the cockpit are a little bit fiddly currently, but I'm sure it'd be very easy for the developer to uh, fix up the issue. Correct. Just coming up through 4,000 feet, so one to go. Chapter 523, continue approach. Beach 90 on report departure. Again, we'll get ourselves levelled off at 5,000. We'll get the aircraft nicely trimmed out, and then we'll give the autopilot a bit of a test. Currently, of course, the aircraft using default with Sobo Avionics, so expecting to see much the same behaviours as we'd see with any default aircraft. Although the aircraft apparently works very flawlessly at the moment with the uh, working title NXI G1000 mod, so that's really nice to hear. Still yet to try the mod myself, but I'll certainly give it a go at a later date. Copy traffic and the reverse of the Just build up a little bit of speed before we come back on the torque. You can already see St. Bart's Island there again on the uh, PFD off in the distance. And again, we'll come back to around 1300 foot pounds on the torque gauge for our cruise power setting. That seemed to give us about 150 knots indicated. So heading bug is set. The aircraft's pretty nicely trimmed now. We'll get the autopilot in so flight director can go on. We'll go into heading. And we'll come into out. We'll just reset the out there to 5,000 feet. And we'll give the autopilot a go. Once again, those click spots are a little bit fiddly. But overall, it seems as though the autopilot's done a nice job there. It captured fairly aggressively, but again, it's default with Sober Avionics, so we'd expect that. And it looks like we're just drifting high of our 5,000 foot set altitude there at the moment. We'll see whether or not the aircraft levels us off. Curacao Control, American 1028, 10.14, flight level 340. Okay, so it looks like it is going to maintain altitude, albeit not too accurately, which again is very typical of the default Sobo avionics. Anyway, once again we'll head outside the aircraft and I'll come back to you as we're ready to make our approach into St. Bart's. Wind's out from 070, so looking for runway 10, which is great for us. That's obviously the more entertaining runway to land on. Should be a really nice test of the Kodiak as we come over the hill. See how the aircraft behaves there in terms of its performance and stall capabilities.
So welcome back to the cockpit once again. We've got the island of St. Bart's just off the nose. Unfortunately, a little bit hidden in cloud there at the moment. But anyway, we'll disengage the autopilot. Flight director can come off as well. And again, we'll come back on the power. We'll start a descent. We're a little bit high here at the moment. So we'll come fairly far back on the power. And again, just weaving our way through the clouds in towards the island. We'll run the descent checklist once again. So the engine inlet is set to normal. Pitot static heat not required. Altimeters are set. CDI is set. Power is set as required. Seats and shoulder harnesses are secure. And the inertial reel lever is set to lock. The airfield's just out on the uh, westerly tip of the island. You can see it there on the nav display. And you can see we're really coming in on a bit of a dogleg here for runway 10 at the moment. We'll just continue on our present heading for now. And just continuing to come off that power so that we can uh, increase our descent rate here. I have found that the Kodiak is a fairly slick aircraft. It's not particularly difficult to lose speed, but you do need to be quite proactive in managing your approach. If you do get high and fast, it does take a little bit of effort to correct. So we'll just continue in towards the island, as I say, on a bit of a dogleg. And then we'll just turn straight on to final for runway 10. Flight to flight level 340, direct thesis, American 1028. Same as before, really, we'll get the aircraft slowed down to around 80. We could probably stand to take 85 knots this time over the hill. And then down onto uh, runway 10. Again, we're not looking to make a particularly smooth landing. We'll just get the aircraft down onto the runway, start braking, use uh, full beta range again on the prop. Just coming through 2,000 feet at the moment. Jet Air 523, wind calm at 3 knots, runway 11, Kirkland. The runway is the other side of this bank of cloud, the other side of the hills as well. Jet Air 523. And again, just coming back on the power, we'll start slowing up so that we can take the flap. For Alpha only point 11, Kirkland Central Check. Running through the landing checks, the fuel selector valves are both on, auxiliary fuel pump can come on. Firewall fuel shutoff valve is in. Fuel condition lever is set to high idle. Prop lever is set to max RPM. And we're below 138 knots now, so we'll start configuring the aircraft. If we have to one, this is auto final. And you can see we've more or less got ourselves lined up here on final now for runway 10. Okay, so you can see the runway off the nose now. We're going to obviously have to drop in over the ridge line here in towards the runway. Once again, the landing is probably going to be fairly agricultural. We just want to get ourselves down and braking, get the aircraft slowed down. We do have a little bit more runway to play with though, so we can afford to be a little bit more refined. Not that the uh, cargo is going to mind either way. So just dropping in over the trees, cut the power, and getting ourselves lined up on the runway centre line. There's touchdown, start braking, full reverse once again, and we'll cancel the prop. Make our way down to the threshold, we'll turn the aircraft around.
and we'll vacate off to the left. We'll get the landing lights off. Same for the strobes. Seems to be quite a bit more space here on the apron at St. Bart's, so we'll get ourselves parked up. We'll head straight for the terminal again, just so we can offload our cargo nice and conveniently. And confirm for DV uh, 281, we're clear below to done. So we'll just pull up here on the left. Again, just checking our wingtip clearance. Just a visit on surface, call your class, door 9, DV 281. Part brake can go on. So continuing our after landing checks, the fuel condition lever is set to low idle. Auxiliary fuel pump is off. Strobe lights are off. Landing light and taxi lights are off, Peter heat is off. And once again for the shutdown, the part brake is set. Environmental control systems are off. Auxiliary bus switch is off. Power lever is set to idle. Prop lever can go back to the fully feathered position. And the uh, trade one able to reduce to give way to the company uh, Islander about the cross shot of in the tower. Generator and alternator can come off. Now we'll just cancel the caution. ITT is stabilised and the fuel condition lever can go to cut off. So the engine running down, the lights can come off, we'll get the beacon off. Cancel the warning. Firewall fuel selector is off. And we'll get the left and the right fuel selectors off. Avionics master switch can come off. And lastly, the master switch can come off. So, another safe landing and completion of leg 2 on our morning cargo run. Again, St. Bart's offering a really nice challenge, quite different though in terms of the challenge it offers compared to Saba. We probably could have stood to flare a little bit more in the landing there just to soften the touchdown. Anyway, we'll offload the last of our cargo before we continue to make our way home towards Saint Martin. The last leg of the trip, should you care to join, will be a time lapse hop from St. Bart's over towards Grand Case. As we go, I'll give you my overall thoughts and opinions on the Simworks Studios Quest Kodiak in its current state. So let's make the short run home and we'll chat as we go. So there you go guys, I hope you enjoyed our multi-sec today out in the Simworks Studios Quest Kodiak. It will probably come as no surprise to you if you've joined along for the entire flight, but overall I really enjoyed the aircraft. I must admit I actually found the Quest Kodiak to be rather a pleasant surprise. Obviously Simworks Studios are not new developers to Microsoft Flight Simulator, having given us the Okavango Delta scenery, as well as the Zenith CH701. The Zenith, whilst a very nicely polished product, is obviously quite a simplistic aircraft, and I think it actually somewhat belies the talents that Simworks Studios obviously have. Overall, the Quest Kodiak is actually a really impressive effort from Simworks Studios, and as I mentioned during the flight, it's actually quite hard to find all that much I can fault. Once again, the aircraft that you've seen here today is still in a pre-release state, so you can expect changes and hopefully some improvements as well between now and release. That being said, if Simworks Studios were to release the product tomorrow, I think it's already in more than an acceptable state as a payware aircraft. Modelling and texturing, as hopefully you've seen for yourselves, is really exemplary, very nicely done. The same goes for these sounds. Systems modelling seems to be very comprehensive. There were one or two switches that didn't function, but for the most part everything seemed to be there. And running through with the real world checklist, I couldn't find anything there that wasn't operable in a normal phase of flight. As far as the flight model goes, I don't have any frame of reference in terms of the real Kodiak, but certainly the aircraft, as I said, very pleasant to fly, it's very smooth. It's also very stable, so very easy to hand fly. I'm sure that most of you can appreciate there are some add-ons that fly quite strangely, can be a bit of a handful and often a bit of a surprise. Those sorts of aircraft can be a bit of a chore making a review for as you never really know what's coming next. The Kodiak was quite the opposite though, it handled very much as I was expecting throughout the flight, again a real joy to fly. One of those aircraft where you really feel like you're in control as opposed to just managing its handling characteristics. Once again, it's actually quite difficult to find too much to fault with the product, as we mentioned some of the click spots are a little bit fiddly, they could perhaps use some work. Obviously we do have all of the issues associated as well with the default Asobo avionics. But as I mentioned earlier, the aircraft is apparently very much compatible with the NXI G1000 mod. 
Obviously we didn't use that in today's video, but hopefully that should go a long way towards improving the aircraft's avionics suite. Lastly, one thing that probably is worth noting, the product's actually going to be released in two separate packages. You'll have a standard variant, which you've seen here in today's video, which I have to say encompasses a whole lot of different variations on the aircraft. We have both the standard wheel variant, the Tundra tyre variant, we also have the option to add or remove a cargo pod. Further to that we have multiple different interiors on the aircraft, you can have seats, cargo, as well as a parachute version of the aircraft which we saw next to us on the ground in Grand Case. The second version of the product will be a float plane version and of course you'll get all of the additions associated with that. As I understand it you can buy both separately, you don't need to have one to own the other. All up I believe it will come to around €45. Euros. So the Quest Kodiak, not a cheap product, but as I say you do get a lot of variation for that money, and once again the quality is definitely there to justify the price. Anyway, I'll leave things there for now, hopefully I'll come back to you with a full review of the aircraft once it releases. Once again guys, I do hope you enjoyed the video, if you did please consider giving it a like. If you want to see more content from the channel then please consider subscribing as well. As always a huge thank you to my channel members and patrons for all of your support, very much appreciated. I hope that all of you are having a great day wherever you are, take really good care and I will see you all again soon.